Hello and welcome to Simply Gregster EV. It is 10 p.m. and we are in Reykjavik, Iceland and we have a Kia EV6. This is, a, this is a vehicle that you've been waiting a long time for on this channel. I've heard it in the comment section. I've heard it in social media. We finally have one. We're going to review it, but we're going to do it just a bit differently. Stay tuned. So here it is. This is a Kia EV6. This is a rear wheel drive model. Initially, I was told at rental, this is a 58 kilowatt hour battery, but this is actually a 77.4. This vehicle is available in the 58 and 77.4 kilowatt. This is rear wheel drive. Now, I found this out because I just charged it and I put almost 66 kilowatt hours of energy into it and it was a 20% state of charge. So this is a definitely a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery. Output on this is 165 kilowatts or roughly 221, 222 horsepower. I think this car looks great. Again, this is another one of those cars where it looks like it's from 2030, 2035. It looks absolutely great. In my opinion, this is the best looking EGMP platform car and the, and the best driving, especially in rear wheel drive configuration, but we'll get to that. Absolutely fantastic. I do love these door handles that pop out. This is a rental car, so it is scuffed, scratched and everything. That guy's really impatient over there honking like crazy. I love this spoiler in back that has the uh, cuts in it. Air comes in, comes down the side, hits this little spoiler back here. Does it do anything? Eh, probably shaped in, in a wind tunnel, obviously. I love the back cuts on the uh, bumper. Overall, it looks great back here. As I said, this is a great looking car. Let's have a look in back. For sure, this has a power tailgate. We already know that, I've tried it. Plenty of room here for your luggage on your trip or your daily adventures. Lots of storage space in here, charging cables. There's a bit more space underneath there. That's all fairly standard these days, isn't it? Actually, the, the rental car case place gave me the wrong cable. They gave me a Type 2 to J1772 and I didn't check that like an idiot. Anyways, that's not a big deal. Your charging port is here. That just pops open. Um, European standard CCS2 and Type 2. That's all fairly standard. We can close it here. Again, coming around to this side, it's sitting on 21 inch Continentals. These tires are actually really good. We were carving up some mountain passes today and they were fantastic. Coming around this side again, again, it all looks good. Scrapes, cuts, dents just the way I like these rental cars. This way, when I bring it back, I don't have to worry. And it's cracked here and it's missing the uh, tow hook cover on it as well. But overall, a good looking car. I'm sorry it's in this condition, but I can't, beggars can't be choosers. I can't complain saying, oh, the car is smashed. It's a rental car. We've all done the, the rental car before. Let's have a look inside and see what we think there. Again, really good looking. I think this car is absolutely Ah, it's just beautiful to look at. A beautiful look at, beautiful to drive. Let's have a look inside. Let's have a look here. Again, it's pretty dirty. We've been driving it for the last few days. Um, fairly standard car. This is a fairly base model car. It said rear wheel drive, uh, 220 horsepower. Very, very good quality interior. I wouldn't call it high quality, but it's a good quality interior. Nice door panel. Very nice and supportive seat. This seat's really comfortable. We were doing some pretty long road trips. Extremely comfortable in back. Again, nice high quality stuff. Plenty of room back here. There is a plug. I thought there was a plug down here, but apparently not. There's USB-C here as well. Again, plenty of room back here. I am not 100% certain if this car does have the vehicle to load. I don't see it, so this could be an older one. Again, uh, plenty of room back here for your kids or other adults. No issues here whatsoever. Let's go check out the passenger side. I know I keep walking around the car a lot. I'm really tired and I've had like eight Red Bulls already. So please forgive me. Completely flat floor because this is built on the EGMP platform or the eGIMP. Again, passenger seat here and my camera pa paraphernalia. Very nice dash and again, because we're in Iceland, we've been drinking the Icelandic water because that seems that's all you can get here, which is fine with me. So let's turn it on. You hit that switch um, like all the EGMP cars. 
you always have to press a button on them to uh, get them started. But this is a very nice place to sit, super comfortable. Let's turn off that climate control because it's been annoying. Very nice place to sit, super comfortable. This was an awesome car to drive. It was a car I've been waiting for to drive and I'm glad I got to do it here. See, now above, here are some videos of us doing the handling test on some mountain passes. Okay, we put the car in sport mode. Let's see what the EV6 can do around some corners. You can definitely feel this is a heavy car, but the steering feels good and the brakes did feel good before. But you can definitely tell that this is a heavy car. Nicest EGMP platform I've driven. At the end of the day, it still weighs a lot, but the body rolls is pretty controllable. This is actually a first proper handling test on, on this channel because there are proper roads. And I suggest if you are driving, don't do like me, forget to turn off all the lane centering and all that stuff because it just interferes and all you're doing is fighting it. We'll just lay back here a bit because this is a really twisty part. Pretty good handling test. I wish we had more of these back home, but our roads aren't so great, so we always have to go to that overpass loop. So yes, it's very obvious. I didn't do that handling test as we always do where we film the intro and go drive the car. I wanted to really film it on one, one of those mountain passes. So I know that was a horrible edit. I apologize. Let's continue with this review. Transported back to, to the parking lot here in Reykjavik in this random industrial park. Okay. The interior is where things get kind of messy in this car. I'm not a fan of this steering wheel. I do not like this steering wheel whatsoever. I do like the use of the regen paddles. I've criticized this before in other EGMP cars, but on those mountain passes today, I didn't have to use any brakes. I just kept adjusting the regen levels on the paddles. I do like the fact that this steering wheel, although the shape is not it's actually pretty ugly, quite frankly. Um, it's very easy to understand what all the buttons do. Not like in that Genesis a few weeks ago where it was incomprehensible. You have more simple buttons down here, which is fine with me. I do like this center console. You have plenty of storage space down here. More storage space here. Cup holders, more storage space in there. I like how the... Heat, the uh, heated seat buttons are easy to find. They're not buried somewhere in other buttons. Um, rotary knob for the uh, drive select. That's okay. It's a bit wonky to use sometimes. I'm not a big fan. I kind of actually prefer it on the Ionic 5 and I Ionic 6, the stock that you turn here. What I do like though, I finally figured out how to use the infotainment in here properly. So if you want to switch back from your HVAC controls, which are here, which I do like. These are easy to use, pretty tactile. I don't mind having the um, push button. If you want to switch to media and your infotainment, you click this, simple enough to use. You could toggle back and forth, that's fine. The actual infotainment system, again, is pretty easy to use. I'm 100% state of charge, it's showing 365 kilometers. If I'm wrong about the battery size on this car, please let me know, but it feels like it has over 200 horsepower, this car. And as I said, when I arrived to charge it, it was at 20% state of charge or 21% and I put in 65 kilowatt hours. So there is, I know there is some loss, but not that much loss. So yes, but back to here. Uh, your, actually it does have vehicle to load. I'm an idiot. Yeah, it, it does have it. Well, I'm a complete moron. Uh, yeah, it shows you how much I know about these cars. Uh, I don't know why you're watching this channel in that case. And anyways, uh, this was all easy to use. The navigation in here is pretty, pre pretty good to use. I was happy. It does have um, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but wired. No wireless in this year. I believe on the update, they got the wireless Android Auto and CarPlay, which is actually really nice because having a wire is a bit stupid these days. So yeah, that's just the interior tour of uh, here and the infotainment. I like this 
interior in this car out of all the egmp platforms this is probably my favorite one a kilowatt i don't understand why you would really buy anything else in my opinion i think tesla is starting to fall behind the 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 tech curve their once glorious supercharger network is now well it's starting to be open to everyone and here in places like iceland and, and the mainland europe it's been open to everyone for quite a while so there's really no point having a tesla anymore this car charges faster it looks better it drives better and quite frankly it's the one i would have over a model 3 any day well if you made it this far please think about like and subscribing we always need the support and we'll see you again in the next video and i do apologize that this was kind of a rushed review but i'm also on vacation so i want to enjoy myself a bit have yourselves a good night and a goodbye from Reykjavik, Iceland.